Hey, good morning, everyone. Marty Mazzori here. It's Friday, the 25th of October, 2024. This is going to be a really quick one. My schedule today and over the weekend demands that I just kind of get busy with you here today and get to what I think are important parts, important updates about what's going on in the world. And then uh, again, keep it, keep it short and sweet, so to speak. So our index actually didn't move for the third week in a row. There's just a, two or three data points I want to share with you. One is mortgage purchase applications. You can see that they're just kind of going nowhere as mortgage rates you know, came off the boil uh, you know, in August a bit with weak economic data. And that's when we had a pretty good you know, high single digit correction in the S&P. I think we had a 16% correction in the NASDAQ. And that was on fear over recession. Since then, as I'm going to discuss, uh, the economy or the data have gotten better. As I've mentioned, our index now is just slightly in the red, which means odds of recession over, say, the next 6, 12 months are reduced. They're still better than 50-50, but less than they were here just a few months ago. But um, mortgage apps going the other direction would be a response to now higher 30-year average mortgage rates. And while you know higher yields are reflecting better data, as you can see in the interest rate sensitive sectors, well, then that's a real headwind, which calls into question how good for the economy and for the markets, believe it or not, is the better data. Meaning in this environment, when suddenly the market had discounted multiple Fed rate cuts, if the data turn around, and the Fed then suddenly becomes more hawkish, what does that do to asset markets that have been up until recently mostly fearing inflation? That 30% peak to trough decline in 2022 was not about recessionary fears, folks. It was about inflationary fears. So kind of you know the whole rock and a hard spot analogy to some extent going forward when we're talking about asset prices. Up next, uh, the NFIB Small Business Optimism Index. We had a slight uptick last month in overall optimism, just a tiny uptick in hiring plans and a big downtick in CapEx intentions. So you can just see the slope of these data and how they tend to slope leading into recession. So nothing there that inspires a lot of confidence just yet. The Chicago Fed National Activity Index, it's kind of an economic index within our index. 85 data points, 38 currently negative, 48 positive. It's kind of like our own index, just slightly in the negative. Economic surprise index. So this is, as I've told you a hundred times, of course, this is the data coming out compared to what economists' expectations were previously. So we're moving nicely in the positive in the US. It's getting better in Europe. It's getting better across Asia as well. And again, hence our much less negative score in our own proprietary index. So what does it mean? Does it mean we're out of the woods? Does it mean things are getting better? It actually means that, like I said about August, there was high pessimism with regard to the economy and the data has come out and demanded less pessimism. So when you're looking on the ground, coincident data, things are improving. Now, leading economic indicators came out this last week. I didn't load up the chart, but they were actually negative and worse than expected. So on a go forward outlook, the handful of leading indicators that are tracked for that index are saying things may be beginning to roll over just a little bit, but right here on the ground, again, data have come out better than expected. Uh, another indicator of that is the ratio between consumer staple stocks and consumer discretionary stocks. When this is going up, in theory, recession risk is rising because folks are rotating away from cyclical you know, discretionary sectors and into staples like healthcare, utilities, and, um, and consumer staples. And you can see at one point this year, staples were outperforming um, discretionary by 14% on the year. And remember what I said about August, right? And that's where we were right in here in that July, August period. And here we are, it's almost a dead heat. So suddenly optimism has come back. Uh, staples are still up nicely on the year, but they're just barely outperforming discretionary at this point. So that would be considered probably rotation as the data have improved. Now to some market statistics. 
Now, what's very interesting is the market has done okay. This has been a rough week this week, although today things have gotten a little bit better. But last time I checked, the Dow had gone from like up 160 points to down 100 points. S&P is still hanging in there because tech is doing okay. Tesla did much better with their earnings than people had anticipated. The equal weight index was pretty flat on the day. So this is the 10-year Treasury yield. And again, here we are back here, August and September. It's falling like a rock because everybody was fearing and recession there for a moment anyway. And here, as the data improved, so have yields or they've gone higher. Now, as we know, that has to be a headwind if that's correct in terms of what the Fed will do going forward. So how will markets react to a less dovish Fed? That remains to be seen. If indeed this is a trend that's going to continue. Now, folks, this is the base case for many really smart, you know, almost legendary investors. They're shorting treasuries right now. I think they may be getting out over their skis a little bit because this economy is not out of the woods just yet, in our view, by any stretch. And you know, going short treasuries, expecting yields to continue to go higher or abandoning duration, if you will, I, I think that may work. You know, here for the next few weeks, you know, if the election goes a certain way, that may continue to, to work. We get into next year and, you know, we try to digest perhaps higher interest rates and everything that goes with that, or the data begin to roll back over as the leading indicators are kind of warning just a little bit here this week. Then, you know, all bets are off. Yields come back down, bonds rally, and those folks kind of get stung, if you will. The dollar, as I showed you, we were right here. Everybody was pessimistic. You know, the economy, rates are coming down. And I said, that may be the case, but technically this is a hugely bullish chart. And look what the dollar has done. And for the most part, stocks have gone up along with it. And again, same thing with yield. So there's you know, potentially, if those correlations come back in line, then this like yields would be a headwind for stocks. I mentioned gold the other day. I think we were right here during that last, um, video where I showed you this and I said that you know the the technicals are negative you know people are piling into gold I've talked about the conundrum in the written blog that gold's correlation to things like rates and the dollar have gone opposite of what you'd expect as well but gold trades on different things at different times no ifs ands or buts about it this is still a bearish looking chart to me um, this isn't bothering me obviously as gold is a not small core position for us but I'll be surprised if over the next few weeks we don't give a little bit of that back, but we're not long-term bearish gold by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, quite the opposite. As for stocks, this is the daily S&P 500, the busiest chart I show you. Uh, forgive me for that, but here's your rising wedge pattern. Still have these long bearish divergences that tend to not play out well when it's all said and done. Long bearish divergence on the RSI. When we zoom out and let's say look at a 30-year monthly chart this is you know by by our technical definition a very extended market we're actually overbought on the monthly basis and those tend to resolve with some corrective action got your classic rising wedge pattern so folks if we're not you know joining the party and getting all excited while i'm not bearish for the year end uh, longer term these technical charts demand that we remain somewhat guarded and have some element of defensiveness in our portfolios for now. And then the NASDAQ, remember I mentioned that we're not quite getting there to all time highs. Big boost last couple of days, big gap right there. You know, big rising wedge, bearish divergences down in here. So the momentum isn't really matching the price action just yet. And that just says that there's risk that this thing rolls back over, but you certainly don't have a sell signal. You'd have to break below the trend line, same thing on the S&P before you get a sell signal. And then if you were to lose the 50 day moving average, that would probably be pretty ugly on a short term basis. I will leave it there, folks. Thank you as always for watching and listening. And I'll be back next week. Have a great weekend. Bye bye.